Hey, is someone in there? I think we have someone inside. Welcome to Stonington's newest and finest police boat. the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce. I want to welcome back my co-host Trisha Walsh and we've got a really great show for you this evening. You can see that we are in Stonington on the Stonington Police Boat at Dotson's Boatyard and I want to welcome at this time Commissioner Mel Olson. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Chief Darren Stewart, welcome to the show, Thank and the you. one and only Captain Jerry Desmond. <laughs> I love Jerry uh, uh, for last because he will be the personality behind this boat. But I want to welcome you. We are so excited to be on this beautiful boat, this brand new boat, and uh, you're going to have a real treat this evening. So we're going to start off with a couple of questions, and uh, I don't know. Let's start with you, Commissioner. Sure. How do we get this boat? How do we well, obtain we this boat? Well, through a federal grant and a lot of work, hard work. Uh, in fact, I think it started when uh, you were the chairman of the police commission. You're darn right there, <laughs> Commissioner Olson. I don't want to pat you on the back, but really. <laughs> well, uh, you know, when it came to us, and of course, uh, uh, Jerry was very much uh, instrumental in this. And, and at the time, Jerry, our boat was sort of our old boat. Why don't you tell us about our old boat well, and the condition of that boat? <clears throat> well, the timing of the grant couldn't be any better because our old boat, um, was being repaired constantly and was uh, was pretty much done and uh, we couldn't really keep repairing it anymore so fortunately uh, we were able to get the grant through FEMA and get this boat um, serving not only Stony but serving the region and um, serving the Thames River and the New London Port um, is really the reason we got the boat and the town of Stonington has benefited greatly from this grant. Chief Darren Stewart, how long was this process from start to finish with the grant and then to this point uh, building the boat? I think it's been about three and a half years, and, and uh, Commissioner Olson was correct. It started back when you were the chair. Uh, we started way back when. I think we had one application that didn't go through, and then finally we were able to get one that did. And uh, it took us about, let me say, Jerry, about nine months to from design to final build, and then here it is, just got delivered last week. So here we go. Well, I think it's also important that we note that design, build, so this was not a boat you just went to a boatyard and bought. This was a boat that was custom made for your specifications for the police department. Right. We, we received the grant um, for $375,000 um, based on our vision of what we wanted for a vessel. Um, we picked out Safe Boat Company out of uh, Seattle. And uh, they're the builders of this boat, and you're able to uh, custom build a boat for our needs and for the, to take care of Stonington as well as the region. So we are neighbors with um, the Naval Sub Base and the Coast Guard Academy uh, electric boat. Uh, Commissioner Olson, how important is this boat uh, to Homeland Security? Well, I think it's a joint effort between uh, Homeland Security and local police departments. This opportunity for these uh, boats to be available with trained personnel. If there's a major catastrophe, you got Millstone, you got an electric boat, you got the sub base, and here this this invisible shield of uh, defense uh, for some major catastrophe that can be out there in a, in, in a short order of time. These these uh, boats uh, travel pretty fast. Two uh, three hundred horsepower engines on the back. I think that uh, that's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. Well, and the commissioner mentioned training for the operation of the vessels. Now, I know you have been the main operator so far. Um, <laughs> now, how does the rest of the police uh, force specially designated to certain yeah. officers? Yeah, we have certain officers that have been operators in the past, but as you can see, this is going to be a more sophisticated vessel for them to, to uh, learn on. And 
So what's happening now is um, we have advanced classes that the offices are taking, and the grant, um, just so everyone knows, it's not. It wasn't just the vessel. Um, I sit on a board uh, over a, a port security group. It's not a board, actually. It's a group um, that works on enhancing uh, the protection of the uh, Thames River and of the New London port. And this group uh, works together. Um, offices from various police departments work together to obtain grants and put together strategies to help protect that harbor. And so as part of the grant system, if you will, that FEMA is uh, allocating, certain police departments were able to get vessels. And then as a group, we've got training money. We, have, we put in for grants for training money, and we do it as a region. We, all, we put in for safety equipment for all the boats. We do that as a region. And then going forward, there's, gonna, there's money that's put aside that's going to be sustainment grants that will allow us to sustain these vessels with new engines if we need in the future or retrofitting or overhauling um, in the years to come because the, uh, the federal government wants to support this, this program so that they have assets here that are able to respond quickly to an incident if there's a problem over in the Thames. Now, you mentioned responding quickly to any type of a problem. Is there um, a specific amount of time that this boat is manned and in the water, or is it as needed? This boat is capable of being in the water for 12 months of the year. This boat... Um, it is, it's got a fully enclosed hull. It's all aluminum. Um, some PDs uh, opt to take it out for a month or two just to you know, go over it in the winter. Some keep it in the water. We're waiting to, we're waiting to see. We're not sure how we're going to do that, but it, it certainly is capable of being in the water 12 months of the year and responding in all kinds of weather. So um, we're waiting to see. It really depends on where you're able to keep it and you know how frozen the area gets where you're able to keep it and whether you need bubbler systems or whether you need um, to you know move it to a place where it doesn't freeze over. That's the key. I mean, out, out in, outside the harbor, um, it doesn't, it doesn't never freezes. So um, inside the harbor, sometimes really bad winters, it will freeze. So um, the answer to your question, it's it's made to respond all year. But whether we'll take it out for a month or so, right in the peak of January, February, there just to do an overhaul, we're waiting to see. Okay. Chief Stewart, what is a, two questions? Um, do we work with other agencies, other uh, PDs, with this boat on the waterways? And how? What is the lifetime of this particular boat? Yeah, we have to work with other police departments. They've helped us out over the years. Uh, for many years, we had the blessing of the fleet here, mm -hmm. and and uh, we ask for mutual aid from many departments, whether it be Groton, uh, Groton City, New London, uh, Norwich, they come down and helped us out. So we've, we've reciprocated in that way too with some of the fireworks and other events around in the area. So we've worked closely with the other police departments. The life of this vessel, I believe, should be around 25, 30 years, as long as if it's uh, maintained. And 25, 30 years? I mean, I even including some of the technology, does that have to be updated? Probably some of it will have to be over the years okay. as new technology comes along. If you look at, you'll see in a little while when you go inside that some of that technology hasn't been, wasn't around five, ten years ago, and now it's here today. So what's going to happen in five or ten years from now, we, we really can't predict, but we may have to adapt as things come along down the line. Okay. And we're, we're at Dodson Boatyard. Is, is, uh, is there a particular reason why we're at this particular we're at this boatyard because um, Dodson's has offered to um, birth this vessel here for us um, and, and assist us with the birthing of the vessel here. You know, it offers power, it offers water. And, and one other point um, to be made, you talked about other police departments. This vessel is actually the sister ship of Groton Town. So okay. um, when you see in the future, when you see Groton Town and us out there, you will see twin vessels out there. And we did it for a reason. Um, so that we could have continuity between the vessels. So if we have to cross over and share personnel one way or the other, both will be very familiar with the boat's operation, how it handles, and all the equipment on board. So um, although all the vessels in the, in the region are not the same, we chose to match up with Groton because they're our, they're our neighbors, and oftentimes we have to work mutual aid together, and it makes sense for us to be able to put a Groton officer on here that assist if we need to. Okay, all right. Commissioner Olson, we, we are obviously in Mystic, Connecticut. Uh, where this is a high, uh, you know, high traffic, high season, tourist season. Um, what do you think the most important uh, part that this boat will play during that high tourist season? Well, I think that, uh, you know, the economy in this area depends on boating a lot mm -hmm. of it. And uh, 
people can feel a lot safer in this area because of this boat. I mean, if there's an emergency, this uh, boat can be out there in seconds. It's just amazing. And the training the uh, police department has, we have the best uh, training and the most qualified people for uh, first responders. So it just, uh, just makes the whole area a safer place for boating. Captain Jerry Desmond, what, what are, can you give us an instant, what, you know, in your past experience, what exactly, or not what exactly, but uh, kind of give us an example of what this boat could be handling in the future on our waterways? Well, it could be handling a number of things. We have, um, as you know, we've had some recent, in the recent years, we had some boating accidents that have been, was right. actually sank, there have been victims on vessels. We've had people in this, um, in the harbor out here, we get calls for sometimes uh, medicals, heart attacks. Um, where we will assist, it will help us assist to get medical personnel out to those people in the vessel. We've had vessels sink off of Fishers Island where sometimes we couldn't get into those places because it was so rough and our other vessel couldn't handle it where this one could. Um, we've had people over in Napa Tree and we do have mutual aid with Wesley and, and, and pretty much on the water, any law enforcement vessel will go assist another agency even if it's not in their community. And, you know, vessels that end up in the rocks off of Napa Tree, you know, the, the bad surf oh, yeah. that's off there. Oh, yeah. We've been over there with our vessel, and frankly, going backing into some situation like that with one engine, if that engine goes, you're going to be in trouble with them. At least we have the dual engines. We'll be able to go into bad spots and knowing that we have confidence that we have two engines. So um, we have the other thing is we have FLIR on here, which is infrared. You're going to be seeing that in a yeah. little while now here. The FLIR yeah. system is going to allow us to go out at night and see things at night, whether it be bodies or boats that are broken down or victims that might be um, need to be rescued that might be floating on the water when they're life preservers and things like that. So this the capabilities the boat is built. Um, we also are going to have um, detection equipment on here if we, if we get some type of a an attack or, or some type of a terrorist situation, we can go into with this vessel and be able to detect for radiation and things that might be, um, you know, problems that might come up that endangering the public. We'll be able to look for that as well. How many feet is this particular boat, Chief? Well, it's 27 foot, but I don't think that includes the, the back end with the engines on it. Okay. So it's, it's uh, as you can see, it's uh, a little bit different than what the normal boat is. It's, it it uh, certainly is. Uh, it certainly stands out. If you have a chance to the camera to pan, you can see that yeah. it uh, has almost like a plastic side to it. So it does, uh, yeah. And, uh, the captain can talk a little bit more about that, that uh, the research that was done and why we actually went with this type of boat. This, this vessel, like I said, has an enclosed hull. You know, as any of the mariners out there know, a lot of times you have to take the plug and put the plug yep. in. But you don't right. do have to do that with this boat. This is fully enclosed. Um, hull. It also has, like I said, the floating pontoons on the side, which are not inflatable. They're actually solid. Um, there's material pumped in there that's, that solidifies that will not allow the boat to, have to sink. This boat will not sink. And if you look at some of the scuppers, um, you can see them down here, maybe below Mel's foot there. The scuppers are like probably around this large. And so this could take a rogue wave right on here and it wash right off and would never go down. So that's reason that these boats are that's built. This is a very similar boat to what the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard used to use it, and many people have seen Coast Guard vessels with the orange wrap around. Yeah. Yeah. This is what the Coast Guard has purchased in the past. Um, they have shipped to a different company recently, but um, this, is, this, is, this is the vessel that the Coast Guard has used traditionally to go out for rescues. Where did this, where was this boat built? Uh, I had mentioned earlier it was Seattle. Mm -hmm. um, it was built in Seattle. Uh, we went out, we flew out to Seattle in September. We test drove it. Um, it's been through a number of test test operations on the water, right off the beautiful coast of Seattle. Actually, we were able to see the city as we went by, and that was nice. But um, and now um, and then it was trucked over here on a flatbed, um, a tractor trailer um, transported this boat on its trailer. It comes with a trailer. The whole unit was. Um, trucked out here. Over, it took about, uh, I want to say, 10 days to get it here. Wow. Now, Captain, how many years, because you had worked on the previous boat, how many years experience have you had um, working in the police boats and training and working with the group that you were working with for the grants? 33. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so. just a few years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just, you know, I, I started when I came on board. On board when I came on the, <laughs> when I came on the police department. On when board. I, when I came on board, when I got hired on the police department, I had some previous experience in marine operation. Um, so I immediately was um, working as an operator. I later became in charge of the marine division as well as the um, dive team, 
and we had a dive team for many years. Um, and I did that. And then after I became captain, then I um, started to assign people and work with them and train them and come out. Um, and that's why, if you'll see also, we have here these, we have these clips. Up. Well, you can see we have these clips here. These are here to support dive teams. We, we don't have the oh. dive teams are safe. The black, the black hooks are here because you can put tanks in here. So if we have, if we have, okay. um, a, 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 say, a dive operation or somebody yep, drowns yep, and we yep. need to bring a dive team out, we can support a dive team for the region, even though we may not have them. So the idea is to build this boat so we can support the region, not just our own needs. Okay. And so how many people at a time can fit on this boat? Oh, probably you could put 10, 12 people on this vessel if you had to. Okay. Yeah. okay. And um, what is the official name of the boat? We haven't officially named it, but we had some big oh. thoughts about that. Oh, okay. We went, I don't know, maybe, you know, we had, under the leadership, we had the leadership of, uh, of our maybe. commissioner, you know, Suzette. Maybe we yeah, should name it the, yeah, 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 yeah. the Tevis or something. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think, Commissioner Olson? <laughs> I think the Suzette. The, 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 the Suzette Tevis or something. Commissioner Olson, um, I know that um, the uh, commissioners are very proud uh, to be part of this, the boat coming in and um, having this in uh, backyard. Is there any one of the commissioners that um, have been versed or have been trained uh, or went out to to see this boat being built? When they uh, when they were out in Washington to test the boat out and take it out in the water, uh, Commissioner Harry Holt mm -hmm. and Commissioner Pat McCauja both flew out and the captain and took it out for a, a test drive. Okay. And, uh, and then came back. They because that, that because the, the commission, they have to be part of the process too. Yes. And be uh, aware of, of what's going on uh, prior to, to getting the boat. The commission's been really supportive of it. We really appreciate the hard work that the captain and the police department uh, have done to to get this asset for our area. It's terrific. Mm -hmm. And we're really proud to have, uh, have this uh, boat in uh, Stonington. Chief Stewart, how many other towns have a boat like this outside of Groton? Are we just the two boats? I think if you go to the other end of the state with uh, some of the larger cities or the places that do have a port like New Haven, mm -hmm. they may have a little bit bigger boat than uh, what we have right here because of the, the harbors. Uh, Mystic Fire Department has an excellent boat too, the, the Mystic Fire Boat. That was part of the same sort of group that uh, where we got the, the funding from. There's um, no fire equipment on this on this the fire extinguishers. Okay. Right. Uh, but there are other communities down the other end of the, the state that do have similar type of boats. Okay. Yeah, in addition to that, we also have uh, Waterford mm -hmm. has a boat that got it through this grant, and so does in Norwich. So Waterford and Norwich have this same type of boat? or A similar type of boat, but not the same make, not by Safe Boat. Like I said, we chose Safe Boat because we wanted to match up with Groton. Right, right. I but they have that. other similar type aluminum vessels that are made for response like this, but not necessarily the same maker. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. I think at this time we should really go into the cabin. I think there's some more uh, footage that we can see in there. And the captain can explain uh, some of the high-tech equipment uh, inside the cabin. Well, here we are in the inner sanctum of the Stonington Police Boat, where Captain Jerry Desmond is going to take us through some of this high-tech equipment. Jerry, tell us about what we have in front of us. You know, um, before I go through that, I, I think it's important that uh, I take a moment and thank the people from Groton Town, Captain Sinagra, um, Chief Crowley, and the people that supported us in getting this vessel. I remember that. If you remember yeah. that, yes. um, they were very instrumental. Having been through this process once in their vessel, mm -hmm. they were instrumental and made it so much more streamlined for us to be able to get this vessel well, and set it the way, the way they want. They paid, they the, paid way, the way, and they yeah. were able to give us some, some hints from what they did. So I just want to thank them first. Great. Um, the next thing is, um, as you look here, these are two Furuno units, one's in front of you and one's in front of me. And these are off of Pictures the Island Harbor Master, channel 16. We are the PD. <laughs> yeah. um, and these offer a variety of uh, information for us. We have chart plotters that show you the charts and show us exactly where we are. That can come in and out, um, as you can see, they expand out. And this is our shoreline here in Stonington. Um, it expands way out, and simply as we drive, the boat just moves along the water and tells us where we are. Um, also, in addition to that, um, there's other views that we can get on here. We can get infrared. We have FLIR on this vessel, which gives us night vision. 
Um, and we also have on here um, depth. We have depth on here um, and a variety of things. We also have radar on here. So we can go and shift over to a radar view. Just simply turn and you'll see we have radar. And we can overlay the radar over the top of the chart that you see. So we we can either have mine and your station. This is the pilot station. You're like the co-pilot. Mm -hmm. As if so you're flying be, a, a big right, bird, right? right. Yeah. So what happens is they can match up and be the same. Or you can run yours independently uh, okay. either way. Um, this is our FLIR handling system right here. Um, this is the controller, which allows us to bring FLIR. So if I, if I do um, come to display, and I was to go over to the FLIR, I can put the FLIR on, um, and I can power up the FLIR. And you will see come up infrared, and of course it's daytime now, so it's not going to be as effective right. as it is at night. Right. It picks up heat. Um, but it powers up, and hopefully, well, there it is. And we can change the color on it to whatever the best color is that you But you can see the vessels out there, and at night, you'd be able to see it perfect. Um, and that's, that's great to have in case we've got to go out and look for people and bodies, or we're looking for someone who might be stuck out there in a boat. Mm -hmm. The body heat we would pick that up and see the person. And then over here, we have the uh, hummingbird system, which is um, it has, gives us depth, and it gives us a picture of the bottom. As we go along, so we have to look for something on the bottom. It is very good at picking out um, images of could be whatever it might be evidence, uh -huh. um, bodies, uh, boat that sank, anything like that. We can pick it up on the bottom as well as depth. Um, and then uh, up we also have down here. We have this is our heating system. This cabin also um, is equipped with heat and air. We have a system that will give us air conditioning and heat. Especially if we're out there for long times, we're out there cold great. in the winter. If you're right. out in the winter doing rescues, you might need heat for long periods of time. We have a marine radio. We have our police radio, which picks up a number of frequencies and other agencies in the area, including ambulance and fire. We have a hailing system here, we have a speaker system, and we also have all of our lights, strobe lights, navigation lights, bow lights, deck lights that light up everything at night, deck lights that light up the interior of the cabin, all of that. And then over near you, um, you have over here also on your side here, um, you have a system that'll do, we have spotlights that can be controlled by that to look oh, around for spotlights. Okay. Okay. And then you have over here a radio, it's called our C-Spurn radio, and that's a radio that reaches out to all agencies uh, statewide. So talking that radio, the world would hear you. So um, you know if, if we have to respond to an emergency, then all right. people coming to that emergency will be able to use that one radio we can communicate with. These are pretty uh, fancy chairs, Jerry. They are. <laughs> these are shock absorbing chairs. They're very fancy and they're very extensive. Yeah. And, um, all four of the chairs are custom uh, ordered. Um, they're a high end chair that, as you're going along, if you're hitting swells or you're hitting um, waves, as, you, as, a, as the boat jumps, the, the chairs give with those waves for a couple of things. Safety, number one. But also, if you have long missions where you're out mm -hmm. there, you're not getting banged around the whole time. And getting worn out because your body's getting banged around so much in rough weather if you're going out there to you know, do a rescue mission or you're looking. Right. And then think of the people that are out there right now looking for that plane that went right, down. Right. They're out there for hours. Hours, right. So you have to be able to sustain that. Um, now, Jerry, how often can we expect to see this, um, this boat out on the water during the summer? Or is it more something that as needed it will be? Traditionally, what we do is we go out on the weekends. Um, we're out, providing that the weather's okay, we're out on weekends on Saturday and Sunday. Um, and traditionally, uh, we'll maybe throw in a day here or there during the week. Um, if we're having a particular problem or there's a spree of some kind of a problem, then we'll put it out more frequently. But we also are very conscious of the fact that, you know, this first year we're gonna be checking, you know, we have the budget and fuel. Mm -hmm. We got two, two engines now, not one, so. We're going to definitely be out in the weekend during the peak when people are out. We'll definitely be out there. Um, and then as we move forward, we'll see availability for funding for fuel. And, and we we're happy to get support from a number of the boards, including the finance board. They did give us a few extra dollars to be able to deal with fuel this year. And we appreciate that support, but we're going to be as prudent as we can for the taxpayers. So. And how important, Commissioner uh, Olson, do you think uh, having the people out there look, seeing that we actually have a boat on the waterway. 
Well, I think just tying it up at, at a marina helps the marina feel comfortable. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's great when you're out on boat and somebody gets sick and you got something like this to take a person yeah. in, yeah. or you got the first responders there to help, or there's a fire on the boat. It's just, I think, just a terrific asset for our shoreline. I think uh, Captain uh, deserves a lot of credit for, for what he's done here. Well, I think I... Go ahead, Jerry. No, uh, just to add one more thing, I was yeah. going to say that a lot of people don't realize the traffic that goes through Stony Brook. And, and that is, that another, is a very good point. And here's another fact that people probably don't realize, that Stonington has the longest shoreline in the state. Our, Actually, I didn't when know you that. take our shoreline and you go yeah. into all the inlets and all the yeah. rivers, oh, we have the longest all, yeah. shoreline wow. in the state. And we have, you go out near Sandy Point, it's like 95. People, boats transiting in and out of Watch Hill yes, and Pocatuck, and you got yeah. the Mystic River, and you got the Stonington Harbor. So there's a lot of traffic, and a lot of people don't realize the calls we get from people on the water that say to us, hey, can you give us more presence, more presence, because these people are speeding, they're doing this, they're doing that. And, and so we're constantly trying to advocate for that, and some people don't realize that because they never boated or don't have boats, they right. don't realize the demand, and they don't realize the amount of money that's out on the water either. And the amount of issues that go out in, in DWI in the water, it's called DWI, boating well under the influence, mm -hmm. those kind of coverage things, um, especially on weekends. Yeah. And most accidents are going to happen on the sunny day, in the weekends, right. in right. the afternoon when people have been in the sun all day. Right. And being out there, the people do ask constantly about getting more coverage. Right. And we're constantly trying to balance that with time and manpower and, and budget. But, we're, but we do it pretty well, though. Yeah, I think you do. Well, this has been a great show. Tricia, nice to see you, and Good I'll see you. you in a couple of weeks. Commissioner Olson, thank you for joining us. Chief Darren Stewart, right back here, thank you for joining us. And the one and only Captain Jerry, Jerry Desmond. So we are Mystic Matters, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Fuck. <laughs> 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 <laughs>